Purple Doll, The Witches, The Mouse Burglar. My grandmother hustled me back into my own bedroom and out onto the balcony. Are you ready? She asked. I'm going to put you in the sock now. I hope I can manage this, I said. I'm only a little mouse. You'll manage, she said. Good luck, my darling. She popped me into the sock and started lowering me over the balcony. I crouched inside the sock and held my breath. Through the stitches, I could see out quite clearly miles before me the children playing on beaches were the size of beetles. The sock started, started swing in the breeze. I looked up and saw my grandmother's head sticking out over the railings of the balcony above. You're nearly here, there, she called out. Here we go, gently does, dear down. I felt a slight bump. In you go, my grandmother was shouting, hurry, 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 search the room now. I jumped out of the sock and ran into the Grand High Witch's bedroom. There was the same musty smell about the place that I had noticed in the ballroom. It was the stretch, the stench of witches. It reminded me of the smell inside the men's public lavatory at our local railway station. As far as I could see, the room was tidy enough. There was no sign anywhere that it was inhabited by anyone but an ordinary person. But then there wouldn't be, would there? No witches would be stupid enough to leave anything suspicious lying around for the hotel maid to see. Suddenly I saw a frog jumping across the carpet and disappearing under the bed. I jumped myself. Hurry up came my grandmother's voice from somewhere high up outside. Grab this stuff and get out. I started skittering around and trying to search for the room. This wasn't easy, so easy I couldn't, for example, open any drawers. I couldn't open the doors, the big wardrobe either. I stopped skittering about. I sat in the middle of the floor and had to uh, think. If the Grand High Witch wanted to hide something, a top secret, where would she put it? Certainly not in any drawer, not in any wardrobe either. It was too obvious. I jumped up in onto the bed to get a better view of the room. Hey, I thought, what about under the mattress? Very slowly, I lowered over the over the edge of the bed and worn my way underneath the mattress. I had to push forward hard to make any headway, but I kept at it. I couldn't see a thing. I was scrabbling about under the mattress when my head suddenly bumped against something hard inside. Mattress above me. I reached up and felt it with my paw. Could it be a little bottle? It was a little bottle. I could trace the shape of it through the cloth of the mattress. And right alongside it, I felt another hard lump. Another and another. The Grand High Witch must have slit open the mattress and put all the bottles inside. And then sewn it up again. I began tearing away frantically at the mattress cloth and above my head with my teeth. My front teeth were extremely sharp and it didn't take me long to make a little hole. I leap, I climbed into the hole and grabbed the bottle by the neck. I pushed it down through the hole in the mattress and climbed out after it. Walking backwards and dragging the bottle behind me, I managed to reach the edge of edge of the mattress, I rolled the bottle off the bed onto a little, little carpet. It bounced, but it didn't break. I jumped down off the bed. I examined the little bottle. It was identical to the one the Grand High Witch had had in the ballroom. There was a label 
on this one. Formula 86, it said delayed action mouse maker. Then it said this bottle contains 500 doses. Ikra, I felt in tremendously pleased with myself. Three frogs came hopping out from under the bed. They crouched on the carpet, staring at me with large black eyes. I stared back at them. Those huge eyes were the saddest thing I had ever seen. It suddenly occurred to me that almost certainly once upon a time they had been children, those frogs, before the Grand High Witch had got hold of them. I stood there crutching the bottle and staring at the frog. Who are you? I asked him. At the exact moment, I heard a key turning in the lock of the door and the door burst open and the Grand High Witch swept into the room. The frogs jumped underneath the bed in one quick hop. I darted after them. Still clutching the bottle, I ran back against the wall and squeezed in behind one of the bedposts. I heard feet walking on the, the carpet. I peeped round the bedpost. The three frogs were clustered together under the middle of the bed. Frogs cannot hide like mice. Those they cannot run like mice either. All they can do, poor thing, is to hop about rather clumsy, clumsily. Suddenly, the Grand High Witch's face came into the view, peeping under the bed. I popped my head back behind the bedpost. So there you are, my little froggies, I heard her say. You can stay where you are until I go to bed tonight. Then I shall throw you out of the window and the seagulls can have you for supper. Suddenly, very loud and clear, there came the sound of my grandmother's voice through the open balcony the door. Hurry up, my darling, it shouted. Do hurry up. You better come out quickly. Who is calling? Stopped the Grand High Witch. I peeped round the bedpost again and saw her walking across the carpet to the balcony door. Who is this on my balcony? She murmured. Who is it? Who dares to transpass on my balcony? She went through the door on to the balcony herself. What is this kneading bowl hanging down here? I heard her saying. Oh, hello, my, came my grandmother's voice. I just dropped my knitting over the balcony by mistake, but it's all right. I've got hold of the other end of it. I can pull it up my, myself. Thank you all the same. I marveled at the coolness of her hair, voice. Who were you just talking to? Who were you just, who were you talking to just now? She nodded the Grand High Witch. Who were you just telling to hurry up and come out quickly? I was talking to my gr little grandson. I heard my grandmother saying he'd been in the bathroom for hours and in time he came out. He sits in there reading books and he forgets completely where he is. Do you have any children, my dear? I do not, shouted the Grand High Witch, and she came quickly back into the bedroom, slamming the balcony door behind her. I sh was crooked. My escape route was closed. I was shut up in the room with the Grand High Witch and three terrified frogs. I was just as terrified as the frogs. I was quite sure that if I was spotted, I would be caught and thrown out over the balcony for the seagulls. And there came a knock on the bedroom door. What is, is it this time? Shall the Grand High Witch? Is it, it is a we ancient ones. She a meek voice from behind the door. It is six o'clock, six o'clock, and we have to come to collect the bottles that you promised. Oh, your grandness! I saw her crossing the carpet towards the door. The door was open and the and then I saw a whole lot of feet and shoes was beginning to enter the room. They were coming in slowly and hesitantly, as though the owners of the shoes 
Those shoes were frightened of entering. Come in, come in, snapped the Grand High Witch. Do not stand out there dittering in the corridor. I don't have all night. I saw my chance. I jumped out of the from behind the bedpost and ran like li lightning towards the open door. I jumped over several pairs of shoes on the way and in three seconds I was out in the corridor, still clutching the precious bottle into my chest. No one had seen me. There was no shouts of mouse mouse. All I could hear were the voices of the angel witches burbling their silly sentence about how kind your grandness is all and all the rest of it. I went clambering down the corridor to the stairs and up on up one flight. I went to the fifth floor and then along the corridor again until I came to the door of my own bedroom. There, thank goodness, there was no one in sight. Using the bottle of the little tap bottle, I I began tap, tap, tapping on the door. Tap, 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 tap. I went tap, 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 tap. Would my grandma, grandmother hear me? I thought she must. The bottle made quite a loud tap each time it struck. Tap, 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 tap. Just so long as nobody came along the corridor. But the door didn't open. I decided to take the, a risk. Grandmama, I shouted as loudly as I possibly could. Grandmama, it's me. Let me in. I heard her feet coming across the carpet and open the door. I went in like a row. I've done it. I cried just up and down. I've got it, Grandmama. Look, here it is. It, I've got the whole bottle of it. She closed the door. She bent down and picked me me up and hugged me oh my darling she cried thank heavens you're safe she took the little bottle from me and read the label out loud from the 86 delayed action mouse maker she read this bottle contains 500 doses you brilliant darling boy you're a wonderful you're a marvel how on earth did you get out of the room i nippled out i nibbled nippled out Nipped in, I nipped it out when the Grand High Witch were coming in, to, I told her. I, it was uh, all a bit hairy, Grandmama. I wouldn't want to do it again. I saw her too, my grandmother said. I know you did, Grandmama. I heard you talking to each other. Didn't you think she was absolutely fool? She's a murderer, my grandmother said. She's the most evil witch in the entire world. Did you, you see her mask? I asked. It's amazing, my grandmother said. It just looks like her real face. Even though I knew it was a mask, I couldn't. I still couldn't tell. Oh, my darling, she cried, giving me a hug. I thought I'd never see you again. I'm so happy you got away.